So now we're, we can enter the temple and uh, as you could see there are the big walls everywhere. Yeah. Now unfortunately a lot of this uh, temple was most probably destroyed when the uh, night slaves in the 1550s or 1590s they chopped up the uh, these rocks to build the the field walls which is a bit of a sad thing now one of the most interesting feature in uh, in these uh, in this temple is the hole here the beam hole of one of the rocks there in the background we can see the uh, the lighthouse that's called Tajordan Lighthouse and in the background underneath the field there is another temple there and I do walks it's just straight straight ahead of us yeah. it's just if you look straight between these two rocks um, you could see uh, there's like a, a bunch of rocks like these here and this is another temple and it's got it's fairly amazing but I show you the uh, See, for me this rock is fairly amazing because it's fairly squarish and uh, I think they had they've put some kind of a beam there as you could see it's fairly square all right now and it kind of looks man-made it's too squarish to be uh, you know I mean to be natural yeah now in a minute we'll go up top on the pinnacle because I think the tingle energy is in the middle there and uh, just down here there is another temple which we'll go and see afterwards cool bananas so this is the energy point here um, this middle rock is the energy point and if you hold they build these temples with the central rock there is to channel the energy to focus the energy from all around the area and channel it to this rock and that's why it feels very good just standing here especially when you've got the moon bamboo here yeah. and usually the bamboo grows where there is water so here underneath us there is a valley and as you could see strangely enough this temple the second temple has been built next to valley and water because yeah. I, I believe that the key ingredient they used for healing was the static electricity generated from water right. very very old and most probably it's been sculpted in the uh, in the land and the earth to reach these temples and there are some other temples like this one maybe about 300 meters um, to the east from here and so I think here with all these temples it was a significant um, power place here the lights especially during the summer equinox are fairly amazing to see especially how the actual the light hits the uh, the sunlight hits the rocks uh, you know when the sun yeah yeah and that's why i believe that this is possibly part of atlantis or this big land which was around here yeah yeah between you know like 20 and 10,000 years ago fairly beautiful place this temple here well, my favorite rock is this, is this rock here and it's got 
a circle in it. This is my favourite power spot here. And especially during uh, the summer. And when I come here, I do. Cliffs, the tsunami looking cliffs. And if you look at these rocks, you could see that they've been placed here. I mean, they haven't been, uh, they don't look natural here. I mean, the ground underneath is green sand. And uh, they look like plonked. So I believe this possibly was like another Stonehenge here with all the rocks around. See, if you look at these big walls here, if you, if you come down here you can see them better. See, there are all these walls around here with huge rocks. So it indicates there was possibly a Bronze Age or an older settlement here. And possibly would have used these temples and added to these temples. This kind of like explains my theory. Just the temple is just up here. Yeah. And there is a lot of water flowing underneath uh, all these different streams. Uh, can you understand my theory? Uh -huh. So I think the, the, the water combined with the rocks there creates some kind of like static or some kind of like electricity. So here we're just pointing up to uh, the temple and there is an amazing amount of water and springs coming out from it. This is it comes down here. Now it's a bit hard to see. And it keeps going down there. 